So let's share my video. I'm gonna share it too. Okay, let's see. It's it's redirecting, and we are live. Oh. I do believe. Hey, okay. everybody. So give us a second. We're gonna share this video into our individual groups, and then we're gonna get started. So. If you're joining us for all things skincare, make sure you say hey in the comments and let us know that you're here. As soon as I get this shared, we will get started. Okay. All right, I think we're good. Okay. Now, let me find you again. There you are. Okay. Hi. Hey, Miranda. Hi. So, all right, everybody. This is my beautiful, wonderful, talented, smart friend, Miranda Zaronis. Okay. Hi. And, she, and so, I'm just gonna give her a quick little introduction, and then we're gonna, and then we're gonna get down to the fun nitty gritty of skincare. So Miranda is a 2009 graduate of Teal College. She's a licensed esthetician. Eight years in the industry. She's been married eight and a half years. She has the sweetest baby boy who just turned one, who I have the pleasure of photographing all the time. <laughs> He's so adorable. And Miranda is a great cook, but she's just an okay baker. <laughs> um, the truth hurts. Truth yeah. hurts. <laughs> and we've known each other for how long? I mean, we've done, I don't even, I've lost count of how many weddings we all, all the weddings all and, the weddings. and it's always like a pleasant surprise because we'll get there at different times and then I'm like it's Nicole yeah. like <laughs> always a pleasant surprise and it's like all the weddings I show up and there you are <laughs> sometimes you're in the wedding and sometimes you're doing the makeup in the wedding and sometimes it's both, <laughs> and sometimes it's both. <laughs> yeah I never know it's like a surprise every time yes I love it okay so um Miranda so tell us we're going to talk about skincare so Great. I know all my people, I guess my whole purpose of putting this little series together is mm -hmm. we're all home now. And some of us, I think myself included, we're seeing it as like a chance to kind of slack off. But I think really we should be using this time to really hone in on our self-care skills and yes. so we come out of this quarantine, like on top of our game, right? Like better right. than we were before because we finally have time to spend on ourselves. I think on our busy day-to-day -day life, right. we are so busy taking care of everyone else yep. that we forget about us. So yeah. um, I think I'm so happy that you're the first one because I feel like our skin is like our foundation, right? Like right. that's where it all starts. Like if you don't have good skin, then you don't have good makeup, you right. know? Exactly. So, yes. Let's talk about it. What do you want to start off? And then I have some questions for you. So yeah, right now the world is a little you know, off its, off its regular kilter, kind of like we're kind of, our hands are being forced to sit down and take a look at ourselves, you know, physically, mentally, all that sort of stuff. Um, and right now is just a great time to kind of reassess and reevaluate what's important, what's important to you and, you know, what you want to take care of. So, I, I mean, it's kind of just, it's, it's, you know, it's a double-edged sword, like everything's happening, but we're also, we're also forced to just sit down and like be in this moment. So, um, I would for right now, I'm, this is the first time I've worn makeup in a month, I think. And, um, I, this is the first time I've done my hair in a month. I'm just really giving my, my skin a chance to breathe and kind of reacclimate and kind of just to see, you know, what's actually going on instead of it trying to um, recover every day after wearing makeup and that sort of thing. Oh, my dad just got here to cut the grass. <laughs> um, and I, I just think it's a great time to, um, you know, to take that, to take a break and to take a break on everything. Let your hair, let your, go without washing your, I know that sounds dirty, but go without washing your hair, let it just let it be in its natural state so that everything can come back a hundred percent. Um, yeah. So that's how I feel about this time. I'm just, I'm just letting things be what they're supposed to be. I love that. And it's like, like you said, like we can actually finally familiarize ourselves with our skin. I think a lot of us that are waking up every morning and putting makeup on really have no idea 
right really really looks like I really right. because like we're just getting up in the morning washing our face and immediately sticking that foundation on right exactly whatever. and so yeah so we finally this is a chance for us to get to know the skin we're in so to right speak. right yeah. exactly and I think a good way to do that um a good first step in this in this you know level of what we're doing here is to find out what kind of skin you have so there's normal um dry oily and combination um so to figure out what your skin type is <clears throat> you want to wash your face and then let it for about for a couple hours don't put anything on after and just see you know is your skin tight does it feel tight if you don't put any moisturizer on it or any lotion or whatever um are you immediately oily that's the natural state of your skin so once you take that step then you can go and see which products you need. So what kind of cleanser do you need? What kind of moisturizer? And I mean, ev pretty much everyone should be using um, serums and that sort of thing that really, those are pretty much for everyone um, to treat your skin. Um, so I think, I think that's a great first step to take uh, is to just kind of figure out what kind of skin you have. Yes, I love I love that advice because I as you're saying that I realize that I never do that. I immediately wash my face and then I grab my moisturizer. Like I don't even know that my face is dry yet and my moisturizer is going. Exactly. On. And it's funny that you say that because I was well, I just had a baby. <laughs> I had a baby about a year ago and my skin is still kind of like calming down from the hormones and everything like that, but um I, I just always assumed that I had oily skin in which I, you know, I probably did before I had him, but things change, your body changes and your skin changes. Um, but I was, I, I let my skin do that for a couple hours and my skin was severely dehydrated and needed so much more moisture than what I was putting on it. Um, and another thing to lead into that, uh, just because you have oily skin does not mean you should not moisturize your skin. Um, honestly, most of the time people who have oily skin think that adding more of anything to it is going to make it more oily, but usually it's because you are not moisturizing it at all. So it's overproducing that oil to actually like lubricate your skin. So if you are oily, find an appropriate cleanser and then still moisturize after so your skin can balance out that natural oil that is produced. I love, that is amazing advice. Cause it did take me, I remember as a teenager having really oily skin. Yes ever ever moisturized because I didn't know any better I just thought right. I was gonna add to the add exactly to the yeah and then I would always wonder like in the winter why my skin was so dry well it was because I was not appreciating it as I got older I yeah. learned that I needed to moisturize and I was just, I just remember the first full winter I went without dry skin and I was like oh, <laughs> right. I've been doing this all Exactly. So it's such great advice. I love, yeah. So, so figuring out if your skin is oily and if it is, it's still okay to moisturize. So yeah. are there certain moisturizers for oily skin? Is, or um, is it you want, I mean, you would want an oil-free moisturizer. Um, you know, you would want something lighter during the day. I tell this to everybody, something lighter during the day and then something heavier at night. Um, because, it's okay if your skin looks like it's super dewy at nighttime when you're going to bed. It gives, um, when you put your, you know, most intense products on at night, it gives your skin that chance to absorb it in when your skin's at rest. Um, so that's what I say. So something lighter during the day, absolutely always an SPF, um, even uh, still an SPF, even if it's in your makeup, um, just to be safe. Uh, so yeah, so something lighter during the day and then like your serums and oils and heavy creams at nighttime. Love it. Love it. Okay. So let's talk about washing our face. Okay. So, I am guilty. Okay. But let's talk. Let's, let's get real. We're going to have real talk right now. Okay. Let's get real talk. Okay. No. <laughs> real talk right, right now. Mm -hmm. So you're probably, when I'm going to tell you what my skincare regimen is, you're probably going to like never look at me the same again. Um, hey, I'm not a, I'm not a judger. You know, once you know better, you do better. So 
I'm not, but I'm I'm not gonna ready. say it for like because I feel like I'm not the only one guilty of all of this stuff that I'm about to right. say. Yeah, of course. So I'm just gonna like take one for the team, so to speak, and I'm gonna yeah. tell you all my dirty deeds, and okay. then everybody can agree with me, and then you can um, be our savior and come down and fix us. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> I am a person who, um, as a teenager acne even even into like after I had my baby so here I was like in my mid-20s and my face was still breaking out like I was 13 right and so I was like okay this is terrible so I remember like for years I used proactive mm -hmm. and I heard so many people like I'd have people say oh my god yeah like it did wonders for my skin and then I would have people tell me oh, that stuff is the devil you shouldn't be using that on your skin right yeah so, but I did I used it for years and it worked, okay? Then fast forward to a really deep, dark time in our life um, where we had to move back here to Newcastle. We were like in financial strains or whatever. And I right. literally just couldn't afford to buy it anymore, right. okay? Yeah. So I stopped using it and my face again broke out like crazy. And at this point, I was like in my late 30s, like mid, mid 30s. I mean, right. early to the 30s like, and my face is still breaking out right and I'm like oh right. my gosh what do I do so what did I do I went to my tried and true teenage three dollar bottle of face scrub that is St. Ives peach scrub <laughs> now and I was using it and for whatever reason it was working because I feel like my skin is so like I'm an Italian I'm really like coarse hair like tough skin right right and I needed that like that roughness on my skin, right. right? So I was using it and it was good. And then I'm seeing all your posts. Like you were the person that educated me on this because I didn't I'm know. I'm sorry. I, no, I'm so happy that you did, which is why I wanted to invite you here because I thought, I know I'm not the only one guilty right. of this. I would see your posts on Facebook, like telling people to stop using it. And I, you know that I love and respect you. And so <laughs> yours are all part because like, you know, right. like, you're like my person. I show up, you beautify all my brides. Like I know that you know what they're doing. <laughs> right. And so I'm like, why is she saying these things? I need to know more to the point where I was like, okay, I'm going to stop buying it. I, I did. I like listened to you and I stopped. Yeah. And I started using things that, that were not rough, like Burt's Bees for sensitive skin and things right. like that. And I did see an improvement on my face. I didn't think that it was ruining my face, but it was. So let's right. talk about St. Ives and why it's so bad. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> the St. Ives um, apricot scrub is, you know, it's, I've used it in the past. It's like buffing off the top 12 layers of your skin. That's not, that's not scientific, everybody. That's exaggerated. <laughs> but um, it's, it's just very rough and you, exfoliating is great. You need to exfoliate so that your, um, to remove those dead skin cells and to, um, so that your products can absorb into your skin. That's the point of exfoliating. Um, the thing with the same, the, the apricot scrub is, um, the it's walnut shells, it's crushed walnut shells, but the granular, the small brown things are imperfect. So they create micro tears in your skin. So you want something that's like spherical, and these are all jagged and like basically like shards of glass. Um, and they are making micro tears in your skin, which, you know, not great. So while it is okay to use, you know, for a pedicure or your, you know, to exfoliate your legs before you shave or whatever else, um, please just please don't use it on your face. Find something else um, that's, that's appropriate for your skin, but is also way less harsh, way more gentle. Um, yes. So if you were, so that's, that's just my beef with it. I know, I know I talk crap on it all, a lot, but it's just so it's funny to me because I've used it. I've used it in the past before and my skin felt like my face felt brand new when yeah. I, you know, when I was younger in my teens and twenties and whatever else. Um, but like I said, once you know better, you do better. And yeah. Yeah. And I'm so happy that you did like, because like, <laughs> Otherwise, I'd just be sitting over here ruining my face <laughs> in my life and not even know. Um, right. Which is why I feel like it's so important that we share each other's experiences and share yeah. our expertise because then, you know, the, the, you do better, you, you know, know better, you do better. It's so true. Right. Exactly. Um, 
So then let me ask you this. So um, I feel like I've been, I've been off to say knives for a couple of years now. I'm a okay. You're clean. Good. Good for yeah, you. Been off um, <laughs> but if somebody, if somebody is like learning about this for the first time, um, is there anything, if anything at all, that we could do to help the repair process of the damage that we've done? Um, switching into something better. Is there like so you're right. Yeah. So your skin, um, your skin, new skin cells form all the time. You know what I mean? So you just want to really treat your skin good and use products appropriate for your face. Um, and things, maybe some, like you said, uh, for sensitive skin so that your face is still getting that nourishment, but is not getting any of like acids or any, any harsh, more harsh things, um, you know, put onto your skin. Um, there's, I would probably hold off exfoliating for a little bit, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're acneic and you, you have acne prone skin, because if you keep exfoliating your acne, it's just basically like ripping off scabs. You kind of want them to dry out and take care of that, take care of them that way. Do you know what I mean? Right. So still cleanse, still moisturize, but don't, um, don't exfoliate. Uh, right. you know, so our skin can recover. Yeah, so absolutely. Yes. Yeah, for that. sure. After, after some time we can yeah. recover from that. So I'm right. just gonna, I thought it would be fun just to show you what I use to recover. And then you can tell me oh, okay, if it's yeah, sure. good or not. So <laughs> yeah. I have my things here. I came prepared. Oh, so, okay. so after I realized that that was really bad and I was like, okay, so I'm not going to do that anymore. So then I started using like the bird's bees for sensitive skin. Right. There is nothing exfoliating in this. Like, right. It just, and I used, I did this for like a whole year. Oh, good. I did. I was like, okay. I was like, I need to stop. I need to repair. And I'm happy to report that for whatever reason, like my acne stopped. Now it could have been a couple of things. Maybe I finally at the ripe age of almost 40, right. my body maybe <laughs> decided that it wasn't a teenager anymore. I mean, yeah. that, it could have it on its own. Yeah. It on its own. <laughs> or, you know, I feel like another thing, and maybe I'm wrong with this too, like when I switched to the St. Ives, it was, I was moving back here from Virginia. So I felt like the environment, the air, the water, right. all of that was different too. So maybe right. the skin finally got used to this environment yeah. again, like it could have been that, mm -hmm. um, you know, or like, was it because I wasn't stripping the natural oils off? Right face anymore it was probably like, a perfect corrupted. storm of all those things right you know what I mean like it was probably a bunch of things and there are so many factors that lead into why your skin is the way that it is um you know things happening internally in your body usually if you have something going on internally it's going to show up in your skin so you know there's dairy allergies and sensitivities and eggs and wheat and gluten and whatever else and right. you know and that's it's such a personal thing for each each individual that mm -hmm. it's hard to pinpoint, you know, like fix me immediately. It's like, well, there's so many other factors that go into this besides just the surface layer of your skin. So right. I think a lot of people, we have to be hydrated. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So and I think like, um, people need to, you know, take that into consideration too, that it's not just one product is not going one or 12 products is not going to fix you need to figure out what, you know, take everything into consideration with what's going on with your skin. So are you a fan of finding like one thing that works and sticking with it forever? Or do you think there's benefits to switching things up once in a while? Um, you know what I, once I find something that works well for me, I kind of stick to it. I mean, I, there's probably some truth to saying your skin gets acclimated to or your skin or your hair or whatever else, you know, like gets acclimated to what you're using, but if you know it works for you, you're not breaking out, you're not having a reaction, whatever else, and you really like, you know, your results with it, I think it's okay. You know, yeah. I, okay. yeah. Yeah. So then, okay. So my children showed up with this. <laughs> okay. It's like poor refining exfoliating cleanser. Okay. Um, recently. So I have used it and I loved it because I'm like, oh, it had that grittiness that I've been missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you're right. So, so do you think this would be okay? Because now it's those round particles that right. you're talking about. Yeah, I do. I think, 
I think exfoliating maybe once or twice a week is good. Okay. Um, and then using your regular cleanser every day is, yeah. is good. But yeah, like I said, the spherical and that looked like it was, uh, did it say pore refining or whatever? So I'm guessing it's, 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 uh, it's foamy. You know what I mean? Does it like soap up in your hands? A little bit. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. A bit. yeah. Yeah. It compared to your Burt's Bees. Is that more yeah. creamy? This is like, it feels like it's lotion. Right. Exactly. So that's it's the difference. So this is the Burt's Bees is more for uh, like normal skin. That's for more oily because it's okay. going to like dry, you know, if it's foamy or, you know, or if it's a gel or whatever else and it foams, it's going to dry you out a little bit more, which is good for oily you know, oily people. Um, but for everyday use, I use something more creamy personally. That is, I love, that's a great little tip. That's a great tip for people that like, don't know too much about what they're using. So if it's right. soapy, then, yeah. then it's your, it's good if you have oily skin, but if right. it's like lotion or creamy, that's good if you have dry skin. Not that's a dry great, skin. I love that. That's yeah. like a great little like because I'm a visual learner, so if I see me that, too, I know. And oh, right, I know exactly. Try, I'm gonna be like, no, I can't use that. Exactly, and in the summertime, I'm especially because like, it's more humid, and I'm I'm more oily than not. The winter, obviously, it's so dry. I have humidifier on every night for bed, and I re recommend that too for everybody, um, just to keep your skin hydrated because the air is so dry in the winters here, and. Um, I, I can't sleep without a humidifier in my bedroom. So, um, usually I take it out or turn it off for, uh, the summertime, but summertime here, I just get so oily. So I do use more of a foaming wash as opposed to like a creamy, but yeah. Awesome. Um, so let me see. I had all kinds of other, oh, I know what I wanted to ask you. So what can we do? So I know a lot of us can't get to the store. Um, right. Things like that. Are there any like household other things that we might have around our house that we could use to to treat our skin to something special? But now that we have a little extra time to care for ourselves, um, you know, I'm not like a home like remedy skin kind of person because it, it you know skin's finicky and I don't really mess with that. But I do know there are like nice oatmeal like masks that you could uh -huh. do because oatmeal is soothing and calming. Uh -huh. um, and you know, that's a nice, like relaxing kind of thing. And then you just wipe it off and see how it goes, you know, do a little, uh, patch test on your skin, see how your skin reacts, you know? Um, but I don't, I don't know, you know, cucumbers on the eyelids. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah, just relax, let your skin breathe. And, um, oh, a, another good tip is do not use scalding hot water on your face do not it's going to completely dry you out same with your when you wash your hair do not use super hot water it's going to dry your face out and then that's when you're going to produce more and more oil so um you know i know it's it sucks <laughs> um using <laughs> cool water or you know room temperature water or whatever pretty tepid um but do it your skin's gonna thank you and it's going to uh it's more soothing than um super harsh on your skin. That's what the other thing I'm gonna say. Splash that cold water. Yes. That's okay. Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. It's going to it's going to kind of constrict your pores a little bit, which you know you want to tighten them up or whatever. But um but yes for your hair and your skin don't use that scalding hot water. Yeah. Awesome. Um I'm gonna check in on our comments real quick just to see okay. If anybody said, hey, um, Morgan and Jamie say hi. I don't know if anybody has questions, feel free to pop them into the comments for us. Um, if you have your own questions for Miranda, be sure you just put them in the comments and I will get them read to her. Yeah. Um, so you were telling me we before we went live, um, other like about moisturizing our hands and things like oh, that before we go to bed. Right. So I bought a while ago, I mean probably a couple years ago, I bought it's called rose hip oil. And I just bought it on Amazon because someone said it was nice. Wow. Um, so I just had this extra oil laying around and <clears throat> I've been really diligent about washing my hands recently. <laughs> <laughs> um and I um by the end of the day they're just like shot they're no matter how much lotion I put on um so before bed like after I do my whole 
I call it the bed dance. Like I brush my teeth and wash my face and do all that sort of stuff. Um, I take that oil and I rub it all over my hands and my cuticles um, to, you know, and it's kind of saved my hands because, but anyway, so after you do the oil and then I use, um, it's a Neutrogena body lotion. It's their hyaluronic, I believe it's in, uh, I think it's Hydro Boost. It's in the big pump and I'm obsessed with it. I'm, I love that body lotion. So do the oil, get your cuticles real good and then do the lotion. And, um, it's, it saved my hands. And honestly, like the skin on your hands, that's the first thing that, that starts aging. Moya, um, that's the first thing that starts aging. So you really want to take care of, um, it, because it's so thin, um, and it's, it's so exposed all the time. And we don't really think about putting SPF on them. You know, if we don't do our whole bodies then we don't do our hands. So like this area and your hands, you want to pay attention to, because obviously we get our face, but we need to bring everything down to our necks and get our hands. So, um, yeah. So when you're doing your skincare routine, bring everything to here. And then when you're applying your SPF for the day or whatever, get some on the back of your hands because age spots, uh, wrinkling, that sort of thing. Um, the UVA and UVB rays are gnarly, especially even, you know, when it's not sunny out and when it's cloudy, those, um, UVA rays, the A, that what they taught us in school stands for, doesn't stand for, but stands for aging, which, and the B rays, the UVB rays stands for burning. So even though the sun's not out, you're going to get hit with those UVA rays. So you want to, you know, always wear your sunscreen. I think that's really important. Um, I mean, health for obviously health reasons, but for vanity reasons too, you know? Yeah. I thought I, so I didn't know like this part of my skin, I have noticed the aging in this, like this yeah. is the first thing I noticed. And I never knew that this, that your hands also age first too, which is, yeah, they're, you know, the hands are very telling. Like the yeah. is, I need to make my hands stay. Yeah. Get your I would hands. never think to make sure of putting like SPF on my hands. So right. Because a great tip. Yeah. I mean, you don't really think of it until, it, unless you're putting SPF on your whole body, which I mean, unless I'm going to be beat down by the sun on the beach or whatever, it's, I'm not putting SPF on my body, but I will put it on my face, but whatever you have left over from your hands or yeah, for your face, just put them on the back of your hands. And, I love that. Yeah. That's great. Okay. And so, um, and then what about lips? What should we be doing to our lips? Um, so SPF chapstick on your lips or whatever chaps, chapstick gen generic using that as a generic term, um, you know, protect your lips too from the sun. Um, but also I can't go to bed without like at least aquaphor on my lips. Um, I, can you hear my dad cutting the grass? Um, <laughs> okay, good. Um, aquaphor on my lips, I can't go to bed without it. If my lips are dry, it's just, I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know. But anyway, make sure they're hydrated and moisturized. Make sure you're drinking your water, you're exfoliating, make sure you're taking some time to yourself. There's, this is just such a, it's such a scary time, but it's such a good time to focus on yourself and you know do the things that you said you wanted to do you know take the time for it yeah i love it so so my uh, so our takeaway i'm just going to recap like yeah takeaway is um my my first big takeaway is like getting to know your skin like this is our time we're not feeling obligated to get up and, and immediately put makeup on our face in the morning right so wash our face and just be in it for a little while and see what kind of skin we really do have under there right. So right. that we can take care of it and treat it right. Love it. Um, moisturize, 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 whether yes. it's oily or or um, dry skin, just moisturize. Right. And be gentle with your cleanser. Right. So be cleanser for oily skin. Yes. More smooth, lotion-y kind of cleanser that doesn't soap up for dry skin. Love that. Right. Yeah. Um, moisturizing our hands and our lips in, in conjunction with the face because right. those are always getting overlooked. Love it. And yeah, take time in this free time to just pamper yourself with some face mask and just rejuvenate. Right. Love it. Absolutely. Yeah. That is great advice. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. Well, let me just check back and make sure we didn't have any other comments. Sure. We have all kinds of people watching. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> but if anybody Lauren has any has questions. valuable information. Thank you, ladies. You're welcome, Lauren. Uh -huh. Love it. Okay, so 
We're gonna leave this up. If you guys joined us late, please catch the replay. Um, and still ask questions if you're on the replay. Miranda and I will- Absolutely. You, you, anybody can message me at any time with any questions, concerns. You know, I'm, I'm an open book. I, uh, it looks like I'm gonna be home for a little bit. <laughs> so I have some time to answer some questions. Love it. Um, and I, I'll post oh, link. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I also wanted to say that um, if you don't follow my business page, my make my Miranda Zeronis makeup page, um, I am offering a free uh, video chat lesson for brides who have lost their makeup artists um, because of everything that's going on. So um, I've had, you know, I've had brides cancel and then reschedule and I'm booked for that day. So it's, yeah. you know, it's not out of malice or anything like that but if, if you lost your makeup artist for that reason please reach out to me and we will try and get you to be able to do your look for your wedding day i love that that is amazing so yeah. i will also be putting um the link to your page in the comments here so sure find you uh, because that is a real problem i mean we're experiencing that too in the photography world like you said they're rescheduling and we don't have that date open right um and, and there's really not much the photographers can do in terms of teaching them how to take I know, I know. photos. Um, but the makeup and and also it's not only that, but I think I think some brides, some people are just deciding to go through with their wedding anyways and turn it into an elopement. So they right. still want to look nice. So that's so right. awesome. That you're able to kind of walk them through. Yeah, that, I would love to do that. I think that would, so that they're looking, know. they're very yeah. nice. On the we'll work with what you have, and you know, well, if you need to get a couple things that's okay too but you know I I would just I would love to help out any way I can I know it's hard time that's amazing all right well thank you everybody for watching and Miranda thank you for joining me today I'm so happy thank you for having so me fun. hopefully we could do this again we shouldn't we should be doing these kind of things all the time um yeah I, I would love that one of the positives that come out of this is that we are taking the time to interact with each other when normally this would be a busy work day for both of us. So right, exactly. I love that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank I'll you. Here. Bye everyone. Bye.